A pretty depressing explanation for why we never see aliens is proposed by a physicist, Peter Dockrill of Science Alert. Today's article, as we know, the universe is huge. We can't imagine how huge it is, and it's teeming with an almost infinite supply of worlds that could be just like ours. So where is everybody? And at the heart of this is what is called the Fermi Paradox, a perplexing scientific anomaly that despite there being billions of stars in our Milky Way galaxy and of course outside of it, we've never encountered any signs of an advanced alien civilization and why not? Well, some say we have encountered signs of an advanced alien extraterrestrial civilization one thing that quickly comes to my mind, very bizarre, the videos that we've seen of these light orbs hovering over the fields where uh, they instantaneously create crop circles, mesmerizing uh, geometric designs that are way beyond our uh, comprehension, how they can do that. Now, is this a human? In, uh, invention, is it an extraterrestrial invention? If it's human, it's really, really advanced technology. It may be around, who knows, but uh, it may be from the civilizations that are hiding themselves from us, for example, pre-flood, who knows, uh, or it may be alien. Anyway, going back to this, it's a decent question and one that generations of scientists and thinkers have grappled with since the paradox was formulated years ago. Some say aliens might be hibernating or something mysterious is preventing their evolution from taking place or maybe they just don't want anything to do with us or maybe they are hiding. They're here among us, hiding. Some people they say they look just like us. For example, the ex-foreign, uh, uh, the ex-defense uh, minister of Canada, former defense minister of Canada, Paul Hellyer, from what I understand, he's still alive. And he claims that they are among us, they look like us, and if we pass them on the street, we wouldn't know that they were extraterrestrials. Anyway, according to Berezin's preprint paper, which has not yet been reviewed by other scientists, the paradox has a trivial solution, trivial solution requiring no controversial assumptions, maybe, uh, uh, but may prove hard to accept it predicts a future for our own civilization that is even worse than extinction. As Berenson believes, the problem with some proposed solutions to the Fermi paradox is they define alien life too narrowly. The specific nature of civilizations arising to interstellar level should not matter. He says they might be biological organisms like ourselves, rogue AIs that rebelled against their creators, or distributed planet-like minds uh, like those described by Stanislaw Lem in Solaris. Of course, even with such a wide scope, he says we're still not seeing evidence of these things out there in the cosmos. But for the purposes of solving the paradox, Berison says the only parameter we should concern ourselves with in terms of defining extraterrestrial life is the physical threshold at which we can observe its existence. Well, we can't observe everything that exists. One thing is that we can't observe, we can't even hear things. Uh, other, other animals around us on Earth hear things. For example, dogs or cats can hear frequencies that we can't. Uh, other animals can see uh, light frequencies that we cannot. And uh, also, when you look at, uh, for example, infrared cameras, what they can pick up in our atmosphere. Uh, you have uh, military pilots, Navy pilots in the U.S., also in uh, Mexico, for example, that have picked up light orb UFOs by infrared film as they were flying from their uh, fighter jets. So uh, there, these are things that we cannot see. Yes, the physical threshold which we have cannot observe everything. Doesn't mean that they're not there. Anyway, going back to this, uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say that Berezin here does not, 
what's the word for it? Why doesn't he, why didn't he make reference to all these things? As a physicist, as a scientist that he is, he should have made reference to these things. Anyway, going back to this article, uh, for simplicity, let's call it parameter A. Oh, so, so he says, the only variable we can objectively measure is the probability of life becoming detectable from outer space within a certain range from Earth. He says, for simplicity, let's call it parameter A. If all alien civilization does not somehow reach parameter A, whether by developing interstellar travel, broadcasting communications across space, or by other means, it might still exist, but not help us solve the paradox. Of course it can exist. They may want to exist, and they don't want anything to do with uh, communicating with other uh, life forms outside of their planet. They're perfectly happy the way they are. And uh, they don't see any reason for communicating with anybody else outside of their planet. Doesn't mean that they don't, they don't exist. Now, he says, the actual first in, last out solution Berison proposes is a grimmer scenario. What if the first life that reaches interstellar travel capability necessarily eradicates all competition to fuel its own expansion? That's his hypothesis. In other words, you go somewhere, you... Uh, reach that place, and you eradicate everything else, willingly or uh, unknowing that you've done it. Now, he says, Berezin explains, this does not necessarily mean a highly developed extraterrestrial civilization would consciously wipe out other life forms, but perhaps they simply won't notice the same way a construction crew demolishes an anthill to build real estate because they lack incentive to protect it. So is Berizin suggesting that we are ants and the reason we have not encountered aliens because we simply haven't had our own civilization unthinkingly demolished by such unimaginable superior life forms yet? No, because we are probably not the ants, but the future destroyers of the very worlds we're being, uh, we've been looking for this whole time. And he says, assuming the hypothesis above is correct, what does it mean for our future? The only explanation is the invocation of the anthropic principle. We are the first to arrive at the interstellar stage and most likely will be the last to leave. Again, such potential destruction would not need to be willfully designed or orchestrated. It could just play out like a completely unrestricted system, bigger than any individual attempt to control it. One example Berezin gives is free market capitalism. And another could be the dangers of artificial intelligence, AI, untethered by constraints on its accumulation of power. One rogue AI can potentially populate the entire supercluster with copies of itself, turning every solar system into a supercomputer, and there's no use asking why it would do that, Berezin writes. All that matters is that it can do that. It's a pretty terrifying outlook on Fermi, basically, we may be the winners of the deadly race we didn't even know we were competing in. Or as Andrew Masterson at Cosmos put it, we are the paradox resolution made manifest. Even Berison admits he hopes he's wrong about this, and it's worth noting that many other scientists have much more optimistic views about when we can expect to hear from advanced alien life. But the physicist's views are just the latest scientific statement of why we may be destined to gaze at the stars alone in time and space, much as we might wish it were otherwise. This paper is available at arxiv.org. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. 
more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.